Okay, if we wanted to look at the uh, 14th to the, this would be, let's see, this would be in the seventh column. This would be entries 14 to 19 in the seventh column. That would be way over here somewhere. And uh, we don't see this. This is off our screen, 14 to 19. But notice it's printing it out as a horizontally, even though it would be the 14th to 19th entry in the worm density column. So we can expand that. You can select a, a subset. You could get a, an area, you know, any number of uh, rows. The rows come before the co comma, and any s subset of the columns just by using the, the indexes or subscripts. So here we're selecting a, a particular subset of columns and rows. Note it gives you the headers and the row numbers even when you're subsetting, even when you do this. Now, we didn't, we didn't keep it. Uh, it, it. It evaluates my statement. This is what R does. It evaluates it and returns it to the default device, which here is the screen, but it's gone. Now, you could save it if you wanted to. You know, you could, all you had to do, all you would have to do Is, is this. It's just assign it to some variable. You note up here, it just created my worms. It shows up up here as a, a data frame. Whenever you subset a data frame, the resulting object is also going to be a data frame. And so we have a new variable now that's permanent in the session. But um, we, we don't want to clutter up our session. So we're just going to show some of these examples. Uh, here, if we say worms third row, it shows us the values in the third row. But note again what I said about subsetting. When you when you take a slice, you take a slice, that's a subset, and it will print out the names of the columns. So even if you just select one row, the the object that is being returned is a data frame, and it will still echo the columns and the uh, the column headers and the row number. But if you just do a part of a single column like we did up here, this is not a data frame. This is a vector. So you, that's what you get. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in just a moment. So for example, the row comes out like that with the column headers, but the column doesn't. If you select a column, it's just a variable. It's a vector. It's one vector. They're all the same data type, and it belongs to a different class. So we can, we can show you that if we query the class of the row selection, it is a data frame. But if we query, query the class of the, the column selection, it's, it's not. It's an integer because that's what was in that column was, was integers. And um, so let's continue. Now note a couple of words here about the use of subscripting or indexes. These closed brackets are operators, of course, in R. They're operators and they have, they don't have any other meaning in R. Most, most operators in R are unique. R is well designed in that way, uh, with the exception of a number of mathematical operators. A number of mathematical operators can have two meanings depending on whether you're using them in script or whether you're using them in a, uh, in a, um, a modeling statement. But, but these don't. The brackets mean indexes. And the only thing that you can put inside this, whatever the values are, they must evaluate to really only one of three different things. They must evaluate to a number or set of numbers. They must evaluate to true or false. 
or they must evaluate to to nothing blank which is any which is anything which is all inclusive if any of the subscripts or indexes that you put in there evaluate to something else you'll get an error and so just keep that in mind but you can you can nest you can put very complicated expressions in here nevertheless you can put functions in here as long as they return a number or set of numbers or as long as they return true false statements you can put in some cases um, in some cases data sets in there even multi-dimensional data sets as long as they can be evaluated to numbers or true and falses you can reference other objects you can call functions you can do all kinds of complex things that give you a lot of power in a lot of flexibility in being able to um, be specific and to be creative about subsetting whatever object you're trying to subset so these look very ordinary and you, you're no doubt you've seen them elsewhere but they're actually really powerful operators in R and they give you uh, they give you a lot of capability as you'll as you'll appreciate okay so here okay so here we are using the sample function and sample uh, is a is a function in R that will uh, take it will it will randomly sample a number of values from whatever the first argument is and the default is to do it without replacement so if I let's let's do this now note we're using it within the subscript here's an example of what I mean by you can do complicated things remember what I said in R you can always if you if you look at you're looking at a line and you can't figure out what it does which happens to me all the time especially if you're in R studio you can just highlight any part of it like this and execute it so we'll run that and see what that does and let's run it a couple of times so we run it once we run it twice we see that every time we're getting a, a vector of integers of eight integers and we note that they're always in between 1 and 20 that's what sample is doing without replacement which is the default it is taking this set and randomly choosing eight of them and they're going to be a different eight every time so it's eight out of the 20 well if we embed that in the in the row designator remember in the subscript since worms is two-dimensional and it is it's a data frame what precedes the comma is rows what follows the comma is columns you can have three-dimensional objects in R or four-dimensional the arrays arrays that's what arrays are arrays can have any number of dimensions six seven eight and you can still subscript them in which case you're going to have a lot of commas you're going to have a a subscript for each dimension okay but we're not going to deal with that right now so if I do this note what happens with worms if I do this so what's going to happen here it's going to randomly generate a set of numbers from 1 to 20 eight of them and so if we use that here we get a random selection of the row of eight of the first 20 rows and it's a different one every time and so why would you want to do that well I, I don't know I'm sure you would have applications where you might want to just randomly select a certain number of observations to do something with them and note uh, a feature of R it it leaves the original row numbers actually the row names as I explained it leaves the row numbers intact so you get you know keeps you oriented about what what's what's what what's on top now sample the default is without replacement you can all you have to do is say if I do this if I say sample 1 to 20 8 of them and then the third argument
replace equals equals true, the default is replace is false. Let's just do it. Let's do it. If we do it on this, you'll note now I'm sorry. I uh, uh, Yes, that's correct. Replace is true. Okay, I should be getting here. Okay, I got one right here. Here's a repeat. So because we're we're sampling and we're putting it back, it's possible to draw the same item twice. And so and that would still work, of course, here. It evaluates to a number. So if we did that in our data frame, now we're starting to get duplicates. We got two of them here. We drew record six and we drew it again. And R knows to change it to annotate it at 6.1. Same here. Okay, so I, I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but there probably would be an application for row selection. There certainly are applications in simulation for sure. Bootstrapping, uh, S, you know, trying to simulate characteristics of uh, probability density functions. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, let's look at just some kind of mundane uh, or, uh, sorting. Let's say we want to sort our original, our original data frame. Now, there, there are two functions that you can use to do that. You can use sort and you can use order. So what's the difference between the two? Well, let's create a vector quickly. So here's our vector. We'll create a vector of X called X, and it will be, we'll use the combine operator, and we'll say, okay, I'll make it just a short one. So there's our vector. We create this vector X, and you see it here, and then we'll take a look at X. X looks like this, 5, 3, 9, 1, 7. It's very easy to sort that. Just all you have to do is say sort X. And it does exactly what, what you would think. It, it rearranges the values of the elements in the default sorting order for R, which for numbers is low to high. So it just rearranges the vector one one three five seven nine. What what happens with order? Let's try order. So he, here's order. So now we order it. Order x. And here's x. We see x. Let's let's show x again. So it's right next to it. Okay. Now we order x. This is the return from order. What, what is going on? Order does something very similar to sort, but instead of returning the values of the elements from low to high, order returns the indexes of the elements from low to high. So what does that mean? Well, here's the original vector. Which is the lowest value? This one. What is the index? 4. What is the second lowest value of the original vector? This one. What is the index? 2. And so on. So we're getting the indexes according to the sort of the values. Well, why on earth would we want to do that? Well, if you're sorting a data frame and you want to sort it by a column, you don't want to just sort that column, right? You want to sort all of the columns according to the values in one column. So you can't use sort. Sort will just rearrange your column, which will mix up all your data. It sounds like something I would do. You want to order it based on the, the, uh, the sort of the values in the column. So that's why we use order. Order is very handy.